Module 2 Urban Form and Image of the City Space and Place Elements of Urban Design Today we are going to do all this in our lecture. Imageability and Legibility Have you heard of these terms before? Uh, I would recommend that you go through the book The Image of the City by Kevin Lynch. This is a great book to understand how you, how you perceive and see different elements of architecture, of urban design and this will help you to create an overall image and understanding of a city. This gives the image of the environment and also helps you to do certain mental mapping te techniques. According to Kevin Lynch, every citizen has long associations with some parts of the city and his image is soaked in memories and meanings. Very often when you visit your grandparents hometown or places where you used to visit when you were a kid, you have certain images and certain pictures in your mind of certain places, certain spaces where you used to play, where you used to move around and that stays with a person forever. It can be a simple clock tower or an open courtyard or anything or a park anything that you have seen seen somewhere before and have a certain picture of it. He also cons concerned with how we locate ourselves within the city and how we find our way around. You are all very well aware of Google Maps, but before Google Maps, people used to use these images and uh, certain uh, ideas they have of the city to find their ways out. To know where we are within the city, therefore, and have, we have to build up a workable image of each part. This book talks all about that. So if you have time, please go through this book. What is imageability? The quality of physical object which gives an observer a strong vivid image. A highly imageable city would be well formed, would contain very distinct parts and would be instantly recognizable to common inhabitants. The contents of city images so far studied which are referable to physical forms can Conveniently be classified in five types of elements. First is paths, where you walk, like can be streets, roads, anything. Edges, how streets intersect with the buildings or structures that are lying along it. Districts, certain larger areas. Nodes. A certain important point can be intersection of streets or an important space in the marketplace. And fifth one is landmarks. These are certain elements that you remember of a city. For example, can you say India Gate is a landmark in New Delhi? Yes, you can say that. Legib legibility. Human beings naturally simplify and categorize the excess of sensory inputs that they continuously experience. This allows us to take the visual, auditory, olfactory, etc. information, make it symbolically legible and build coherent thought processes. In other words, we mentally structure our environment by simplification. We understand something that is produce a mental image of it only through a process of symbolic classification and extraction of data relevant to us. If mental images of one's environment is produced by categorizing symbols, then 
the efficiency of this process is tied to legibility of symbols an easy to read environment is produced through easy to read symbols therefore a designer can guide the mental structuring of city's image through form the degree of clarity is other word is legib- legibility of forms manifest as the ability of the user to recognize the parts and synthesize a coherent whole by choreographing the forms of city a designer is molding the identity of the place given the criteria of legibility the language of design becomes highly important so as described by kevin lynch in his book these are the five elements of urban form path district edge node and land the path now let's let us go through each element in uh, detail there are two elements in city which can be called path can be the road and a visual corridor these two elements are usually woven together the path is the critical component of urban spatial structure or the framework of a city it is the basic element of identification of a city linking all other components therefore in establishing imageability path is a do- dominant player or streets the next element is districts usually a two dimensional phenomena varying greatly in size a district should be should have individual characteristics and functions to distinguish it from its surroundings for example a predominance of a modern high rise buildings a residential or a industrial identity these distinct districts usually have their own characteristics with a social historical and cultural identity and community function so large districts as you have seen in master plans there there is a coloration for different land uses some are yellow some are red some are uh, purple these signifies different districts can be residential industrial commercial so districts are medium to large parts of the city which share the same characteristics this is very important same characteristics style spatial form topography color texture urban fabrics these are the characteristics they share districts may have clear edges of or soft certain ones gradually fading away into surrounding areas from your residential form i would like you to look out for certain examples of dif- districts which stand out from other areas the next element we are going to touch upon is edges the boundaries between districts either the changes of natural topography or artificial form such as a green belt waterfront street wall edge is the identification of a distinct urban physical environment and the perception of change from one def- uh, district to another so edges are linear elements that form boundary between areas or linear breaks in continuity these can be uh, waterfronts railway cuts walls the strong edges are continuous in form and often impenetrable to cross movement the these edges can be natural or man made difference between path and edge path uh, edge is that path directs the motion to specific direction whereas edge edges prevents motion in a specific direction the next element is node a gathering point an important focal point relating to people's daily life 
is usually the center of a district which has the same functions and characteristics. It is important for people to clearly perceive the node and its surroundings. The core of a city is often an important node. Nodes are strategic points in the city that the user can enter in. It can be directed to many destinations. It can be gathering places or intersection of paths or places for activities. So here the images that you're seeing, these are certain junctions of streets. These often become nodes which are, it can be uh, a central meeting point for people or uh, spaces, intersection of roads, can be anything. These are examples of different types of nodes. This is formed in the historic city of Jaipur in Rajasthan, India. You have different nature of these nodes based on the buildings that are surrounded by them. These often in old cities in India become spaces where people come and gather. There, there is a small tea point or anything. Now this is a, an example of a node where in which roads are intersecting at a point and it is intersecting into this small circle. Clock tower can also be a node. The next element of urban form are landmarks, a unique point in an environment distinguished from its surroundings. It can be a natural topography, trees, buildings or a particular feature. Landmark provides orientation and hint at the surrounding urban structure. Landmark is a physical element with unique and special visual features that has a point specific location and can be identified from a distance. Now these are examples of landmarks. This is India Gate in India. When you have understood these five elements of urban form, you will be able to do a cognitive mapping within your mind. Let's go on to cognitive map. What are cognitive maps? These are a mental representation of one's physical environment. Very often to guide someone, we make sketches. We make sketches like this for people to understand. Similarly, these similar sketches are created in our mind because of places that we have visited, we have seen, we have these pictures in our mind. This is a representation of uh, Boston city, wherein which a mental map has been uh, created on paper that shows different parts of a city. To understand what are the problems going on in the city. What are the elements of urban design? You, we will go through five elements of urban design. These are buildings, public spaces, streets, transport and landscape. First element is buildings. Buildings are the most pronounced elements of urban design. They shape and articulate space for forming the street walls of the city. Well-designed buildings and groups of building work together to create a sense of place. This is an example of a building creating a sense of an urban space. If you see the facade as it goes inside, this creates a, a space which is mostly used as a park and then there is a street in front. These are buildings and around these buildings there are these urban paths, urban squares that are created. So next thing is public space. Great public spaces are living room of the city. The place where people come together to enjoy the city and each other. Public spaces make high quality life in the city possible. They form 
the stage and backdrop of to the drama of life public spaces range from grand central plazas and squares to small local neighborhood parks this is an example of a public space these are piazzas created due to the form of buildings and a central space within which is which is a grand public space for people to gather now riverfront is also an important example this is in mumbai along the sea this is along i'm sorry this is along the sea you have this promenade which is which becomes a strong public space and again squares like this become important public spaces so next is streets streets are the connections between the spaces and places as well as being spaces themselves they are defined by their physical dimension and characters as well as size scale and character of buildings that line them streets range from grand avenues such as champs elys in paris to small intimate pedestrian streets the patterns of street network is the part of what defines a city and makes each city unique these are examples of different streets again this is in jaipur rajasthan india next element is transport transport systems connect the part of city and help shape them and enable movement throughout the city they include roads rail bicycle pedestrian networks and together form the total movement system of the city the balance of these various transport systems is what helps define the quality and characters of cities and makes them either friendly or hostile to the pedestrians the best cities are the ones that elevate the experience of the pedestrians this is very important while minimizing the dominance of pri private automobile so there are different kinds of transport systems one of them is mrts or mass rapid transport systems metro rail this is brts bus rapid transport systems this is very successful in many cities around the globe cycle network we should really incorporate these in our uh, designs in cities now next element is landscape mm -hmm. the landscape is the green part of the city that weaves throughout in the form of urban parks st street trees plants and water in many forms the landscape helps define the character and beauty of the city and creates soft contrasting spaces and elements green spaces in cities range from grand parks such as central park in new york city and washington dc mall to small intimate pocket parks these are example of parks this is uh, the central park in new york city boulevards are also important land, land uh, landscape spaces coming on to space and place a place in the city streetscapes and landscapes urban signages bike friendly and pedestrian friendly now different interventions have been done in different cities to make it livable to make it more human like incorporating parks uh, to get that sense of landscape in the city this is an example of Barcelona Again this kind of landscape adds a softness to the city and a human character to the city There are structures that are added in the city to make it memorable like structures like this this is also example of Barcelona Signages are put for guiding the people these are often called wayfinding so that people are able to know where where they have to go these can either be on the streets on the road markings or separate signages 
as you see on streets so now we are coming to an end for module 2 i hope you understood and i hope you will try to find more such examples to help you understand how to build an image of the city and how to understand the different elements of urban scape the next lecture will cover built form and open spaces till then i hope you study well and do well thank you